Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we just want to bless your name. We want to thank you for everything and for all things. Thank you for bringing us back into this program. The moment of truth in your presence. We thank you for the past editions of this program. Thank you for the blessings that are given to us. Thank you for the blessings of salvation of souls. Thank you for healings. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for prosperity. Thank you for always attending to us and set our times in the mighty name of Jesus. We commit this edition unto you, Father, we pray that in every nation of the world where they are hearing us now, you will bless them mightily today in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Once again, I want to welcome you into another edition of the Moment of Truth in His Presence. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You are welcome in Jesus' name. By the special grace of God, today we are running off our series on the Trapetite Prophecy. So today, the theme of the message is the Trapetite Prophecy Part 3. And today we are going to focus on the prophecy to the people. Our text remains the same. The book of Ezekiel chapter 37 Verses 1 to 14. Ezekiel 37, 1 to 14. I read. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them around, round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to its bones. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this sling, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, and a sitting greater me. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the old house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come upon, to come up out of your grave and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O oh my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live and shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it. 
and perform it, said the Lord. The Lord bless his word. This is the story of the valley of the dry bones. The valley was full of dry bones, but then God inserted the seeker to prophesy. First, to prophesy to the bones, he prophesied to the bones, and the bones received life. Bones came together and they formed uh, a host of armies. Second, he said, prophesy to the wind. And he prophesied to the wind. And then the wind came forth from the four corners of the world and then breathed unto the, the great army that stood without a motion. And the, the life of God was imparted into them through the wind that blew. Again, God did not stop there. He said, prophesy again to the people. And he also prophesied to the people. And the prophecy says, Oh, my people, I will open up your grave and bring you out of the grave and take you back to your own land. And it happened. The trapezoid prophecy. On that pattern of this study, we look at the first one, the first prophecy, which is the prophecy to the bones. On that part two, we look at the second one, the prophecy to the wind. So in this part three and the last series of this, uh, and the last message in this series, which is prophecy to the people, we are going to look at some things that happened when Isike prophesied to the people. By his grace today, I'm going to also prophesy to you. By the end of this message, I want you to know that whatever I say today into your life, in form of a prophetic declaration, will surely come to pass in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You better say a louder amen. Now, in the passage we read, before the prophecy came, there are some negative lots. Negative lots allotted to the people. Number one, they say, our bones are dried. Our hope is lost. Number two, number three, we are cut off from our inheritance. We are cut off. Our bones are dry means we are hopeless. A dry bone is very useless. Good for nothing. A dry bone is a lifeless bone. There are some people listening to me today. Your case has become a form of a dry bone. Hopeless cases, medical-wise. Hopeless cases, marital-wise. Hopeless cases, academic-wise. Hopeless cases, social-wise. Hopeless cases, spiritual-wise. Hopeless cases, ministerial-wise. Hopeless cases, financial-wise. But I pray today, in the name that is above every other name, that hope will be fully restored in the name of Jesus. You better say, Lord, amen. Your bone is dry and your hope is lost. Then you are cut off. Many of us, we are cut off from our, from our inheritance. We are cut off from our inheritance in God. We say we are children of God, but there is no sign of being a child of God in our lives. We say we are children of God, but there is no identity of such in our lives. We say we are children of God, but we still lack many things. We are as our Father, the Almighty God, is the owner of everything. According to Agai chapter 2, verse 8, says, Siva, 
and gold belongs to me. I want to pray for somebody today that is already cut off from his or her inheritance, inheritance in God. That my God is said will restore you back to that inheritance in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, when God asks, is he to prophesy to the people? He said, I will open your, your grave. Meaning what? I will open the gate for you. The gate that locked you out from your inheritance. So, I will open your grave means I will open the gates. The gate of joy, the gate of life, the gate of prosperity for somebody to come in. If I do want, you better say Amen. I will open your grave also means I will break the prison bars for your sake. The prison bars. Many of us, we are already in prison in the realm of destiny. Physically, you are free. You are a free person free physically. But then in the realm of destiny, you are inside the prison yard of the enemy. You are incapacitated. Your hands are tied, your legs are tied. You are in the prison in the prison yard of the enemy. So to you, I will open your grave means I will break the prison bars and you become free. I will open your grave also means I will remove obstacles from your way. There are many of us we are being hindered in one way or the other to make progress in life has become a burden. To move forward has become a burden. But the Lord is telling you today, I will remove the obstacle from your way. That part that hinders you from moving forward. Is it the path from your father's house? Or the forces from your mother's house? Or the path from your place of marriage? Or from anywhere? God says, He will remove every obstacle from your way. And you will have easy access to the point of your greatness. I pray for you. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. I will open your grave. Also means I will let loose your hidden stars and glory. I will let loose your hidden stars and glory. That some of us, our stars are in the custody of enemies. Our glory has been buried in one wicked grave, inside one wicked grave for the other. That is where we have our glories and our stars. So, I will open your grave means I will let loose your hidden potentials, your buried glory and your buried stars. I will open your grave also means I will bring you out of obscurity into the limelight. Many of us that have been operating behind the scene, behind the scene before, God says He's going to bring us into the limelight. He's going to take us out of the obscurity into the limelight. Your glory will no longer be hidden. Your fame will no longer be hidden. Your case will be like the case of Matthew five fourteen. We are the light of the world. A city that is set upon the hill can never be hidden. And finally, I will open your grave means I will free you from every form of embargo. Embargo is a limitation or order. An order for you to be limited to a certain stage in life, not to grow beyond that certain stage. An embargo can be a ceiling placed on your rising. You cannot be more rise at all. So I will open your grave means I will lift every embargo that will be placed upon your life, either upon your finances, upon your breakthrough, upon your marriage, and what have you. I pray for you today. In the name that's above every other name, every embargo placed upon your life shall be lifted in the mighty name of Jesus. So, 
the Trapatite prophecy part three. It's all about the prophecy to the people. Under part one, we have the prophecy to the bones. Part two, the prophecy to the wind. Now under this part three is the prophecy to the people. Like I said initially, I say I'm going to prophesy into your life today before I close this message. And that is what I'm about to do now. But before that, in case you are hearing me now, in any part of the world where you are hearing me, you know you still commit sin. I appeal to you in the name of the Lord. Humble yourself before the Almighty God now. Wherever you are now, whatever you are doing, just take some moment to tell God. Confess your sin before you tell him, tell him, oh God, I am a sinner. Comprehensively, I am a sinner. I don't have any excuse. I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sin. Write my name in the book of life. The great to God is no more. Give unto me. Pray. Confess your sin to God now. It is when that sin is settled that I can prophesy into your life and it, it will come to pass. Pray to God. Oh God, forgive me my sins. Wash me in your blood. I am a sinner. I have no excuse. Comprehensively, I am a sinner. But forgive me, O oh God. Write my name in the book of life. The great to go and see no more given to me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And so, Father, I want to bless on him. Thank you for this moment of confession of sins, repentance, and forgiveness. I set our thanks in Jesus' name. For as many as I take it time to confess their sins unto you now. My Father, my God, please, in your mercy, forgive them, Lord. Write their names in the book of life. The great organ of Solomon be bestowed upon them. And let them serve you. And let them work for you all the days of their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Both me and every era of this world on the last day. Count us what you God to reign within glory in your father's house in heaven. Thank you, Father. As I prophesy now into their lives, whatever thing I prophesy today, let it come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. And let great testimonies follow this declaration now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, it is time for me to prophesy into your life. And wherever you are hearing me now, have faith in this prophetic declaration. And it's going to work for you. As a professor now, into your life, just say a ladder amen. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I prophesy into your life. You that is hearing me now, in every nation of the world, where you are hearing me, and I say, it is well with you. In the name of Jesus. In the morning, it shall be well with you. In the noon time, it shall be well with you. In the evening, it shall be well with you. In the night, it shall be well with you. All throughout the days of your life, it shall be well with you. You will not die with my surely. You will serve the Lord all the days of your life and you will work for God in the name of Jesus and I decree that everything pertaining to your life the almighty God will set to in the name of Jesus every grief that abhors your destiny I decree now let the grief open by fire and receive your destiny back in the name of Jesus every grief that abhors your glory and your star let the grave be opened up by fire and receive back your stars and your glory by fire in the name of Jesus. I profess into your life good things will start to follow you from now on in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless you and prosper you. You will see the best of your days. You will never know a better yesterday, but rather you will know a better tomorrow. All will be well with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will move forward in every facet of life. The Lord is safe. We promote you. We elevate you. 
we advance you. The Lord will connect you to multitude of helpers in the name of Jesus. Forward ever and backward never for you and for yours in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. Comprehensively, I say, it is well with you in the name of Jesus. The Almighty God will prosper your hands with every beautiful thing your heart desires in the name of Jesus. Wherever you go from now on, there will be way for you in the name of Jesus. Any door you knock from now on, we open for you in the name of Jesus. Any button you press from now on, you will see the green light in the name of Jesus. It is well with you in the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. I do prophesy into your life and it shall be so in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah.